Hello everybody. Uh, we're still talking about the liquid liquid extraction and um, last time we talked about the uh, phase diagrams and the uh, coordinate system that we are using and we said that we are going to use the rectangular coordinates because it makes it easy for us to extract and put data um, on the diagram uh, than it is for the triangular coordinates. Um, and this is what we ended up saying that uh, this corner C represents the solvent, B represents the component that I uh, am interested in getting in pure uh, form, and A is the uh, impurity that I want to extract. And um, before we start and uh, do the calculations and see what we are going to do with the phase diagram, um, let's let's get to know its components more. So the phase diagram simply uh, contains this uh, line, which is the equilibrium curve. The equilibrium curve splits the region or the, the area into two regions, the two-phase region. Uh, which is the region that splits into two phases uh, spontaneously and the single phase region which is the homogeneous phase um, for the the two phase region it, it uh, contains what we call the tie lines that uh, tells us what is the equilibrium relation so this tie line cuts uh, or it uh, intersects here in a point and here in a point and these two points are in equilibrium um, the top part of the equilibrium curve, we call it the extract layer, and the bottom far part is the raffinate layer. Um, then, um, when we uh, do extraction for, let's say, a single stage, we have the mixture that I want to uh, purify. Um, I, I have the solvent V2 that I, I know um, that I'm going to use to do the separation or the subtraction. I know that uh, the pro there will two, two, there will be two uh, outputs, the solvent after getting A out of B or subtracting it out of B, and the mixture that is uh, going to be um, uh, having less amount of A or less percent in A. Um, and uh, this is what we want to do and the aim of the work that we're going to do is to um, uh, use the phase diagram to know uh, LV1 and L2 as compositions and flow rates. I know that the V1 will lie on the extract layer and L2 will lie on the raffinate layer but I don't know exactly where so this is what we're going to do in the um, this video today. So let's go ahead and start uh, with the simple case which is the single stage liquid liquid extraction. For the single stage I know um, that uh, L node and X node uh, uh, are, are um, contacted with Vy uh, or V2 um, and X node represents the composition of, of the L node or the liquid stream, Y node, Y2 represents the composition of V2 um, and the same for Y1 and L1. So this system can be expressed by the material balance, uh, which is the overall material balance L node plus V2, which is very simple, equals V1 plus L1, um, pretty straightforward. And I call the sum of these two is M. I can apply this on uh, components A and C. Um, and we usually do the component material balance on A and C because they are easy to put uh, on the phase diagram. B is kind of difficult because it is parallel, the percent B or the constant percent B is parallel to the hypotenuse, which is, is not as easy. Um, and that's why we use A and C. And actually, we only need three equations because we have three components. So this uh, overall with the two component material balance equations will be more than enough. Um, so now let's see what are the information that we know and how we can use the phase diagram to do these um, calculations. So, so my goal now is to know uh, what will be the output, the amount and the concentrations of Y1 and uh, of V1 and L1, um, and the compositions with which is Y1 and X1. And this is my goal now. Um, so first we we need to know what the information or what are the information that we know so we know the amount of the uh, liquid feed and the composition uh, this will enable me to know where exactly I'm gonna put it on the diagram and this will help me do the lever arm principle calculations the same here for V2 and Y2 so I know the feed that I'm putting for the solvent and for the uh, fresh feed um, and to put this on the diagram, usually the, the feed is a mixture of A and B. It doesn't contain any amount of solver, b solvent, uh, so it's going to be somewhere here. And for um, the solvent, it's going to be here. 
um, as a pure solvent. Uh, and now let's let's see. Uh, this equation is uh, a mixing of two uh, streams, which is kind of like this. So it it in in principle, I know um, from the physics of the process that L1 and V1 are gonna be separated from each other. Um, but the equation um, as an equation or a straight line that we're gonna uh, draw on the diagram is is exactly like this so so these two um, tell me that uh, these two uh, lines line connecting l node and v2 and line connecting l1 and v1 and these two lines will intersect at point m and from the lever arm principle i can get all the information that i want to know um, so i have v2 and l1 i connect them it gives me the operating line i can locate the point M from the lever arm principle. I know L node as an amount and V2 as an amount. From the amounts, I can tell exactly where point M is, which is gonna be somewhere here, um, depending on the amounts of, of both. And then I check where is the tie line that passes by point M. I use the tie line and intersect the raffinate layer and the extract layer to get uh, V1 and L1. So it's pretty simple and straightforward actually to do this um, calculations or the, the, the graphical solution uh, for um, a single stage. Um, but there are a couple of points that I want to highlight just to, to make this more useful and get the most information out of this. Um, so uh, let's say I have um, the, same, the same mixture that I want to purify and I use two amounts of solvents. One uh, one time I'm using a small amount of solvent and the other time I'm using a large amount of solvent. So the, the simple logic, uh, without even looking at the equations or looking at the, the diagram, the simple logic tells me that uh, I use more solvent, then I get more extraction. So I'm expecting that the, the, the mixture that I'm feeding to the extraction process uh, will exit with a smaller amount of A than it will do with a small amount of solvent. Uh, so this is the simple logic and this is what we're gonna check now. So I, I'm, I'm putting the same feed L node and V21 is the amount of uh, solvent that I'm using which is the small amount and V22 is the amount of solvent that I'm using which is the great amount. And I tell you that V22 equals uh, or is bigger than V21, and I'm expecting L2, which is the output of mixing the feed with the V22, to have less amount of A than L1. And this is what we're gonna see from from the graphical solution now. So uh, I'm locating L node, I'm locating V2, and then I am connecting the line. Um, and from the line, I can, and from the amounts of V2 and or V21 and L node, I can get M1. And from the tie line, I can get L1 and V1. The same thing would would, would be for M2, but for for M for the second case, I have a larger amount of V2. That's why from the lever arm principle, this distance would be larger. It's uh, this this will move upward a little bit uh, depending on the the amount of V2, of course. That's why M2 is is here. And then by connecting it with the tie line, um, I'm going to get L2 and V2 as it is here. Um, on the diagram um, and when you look now to compare L1 and L2 this is the point that we were looking at now L2 contains less solvent or less less A I'm sorry less A than L1 which is yeah this this contains almost 15% this contains around 20% of A which is great however if you check here you will find that V1 contains more percent of solvent than V2. This is 10% and this is around 17 or 18%, which is not logical because I would expect that V1 would be uh, not a, or will contain more A than V2, right? Um, I, I mean, V2 contains more A than V1 because it extracted more A than V1 did. Um, and this is what I would expect, but this is not what the diagram tells me. Um, and to understand this point, we need to uh, put some numbers. Uh, so I'm, 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 I'm assuming that I'm using 10 kilograms of the fresh feed. Um, and I'm using in the first case 10 kilograms of the solvent. In the second case, I'm using 23.3 kilograms of solvent. So it's, it's around like 130 something percent. Uh, more solvent in the second case. I know from the phase diagram here that L node is around 35% A uh, and this means that I'm using 33.5 kilograms of the A um, 
or there are 3.5 kilograms of A that I want to get rid of. Um, and I can get M1 and M2 from summation of these numbers, 10 plus 10 and 10 plus 23.3. Um, and from the phase diagram now I can get some information for instance I can use this line the first tie line to get the amount of V1 and L1 um, as, as we mentioned before I know the amount of M1 and I know this distance and this distance and the total distance so I can easily tell how much is L1 and how much is V1 and this is what I did here the same thing I applied for the second tie line I got V2 and L2 also, from the diagram, I am able to get the composition of V1, the composition of V2, the composition of L2, and the composition of L1. And, and usually, just to give you a hint how to extract the, the data, for for instance, v, for v2, V1, I, uh, I, I usually get the two simple uh, compositions that can be got ex uh, simply from the diagram, which is A and C. So A is, this is 10% A, this is 20% A, this is dot, this dotted line and this dotted line. So this is going to be around 17% A, which is this. And for B, this is 80%, uh, 70%, this is 80% C. So this is going to be around 78% C. Um, around something like that. So I know this is 78, this is 17, so the, the, the rest uh, or the balance of the composition would be the 5% for B. Um, and now let's see, we have V1 is 17% A and the amount of V1 is 12.29 kilograms. So from these two, if I multiply 17% by 12.29, I'm going to get 2.09 kilograms. So this or, or extracted around 60% of A from, from that of A entering with the feed. In the second case, it has less amount of, of A as percentage. It has 10% compared to 17 the first time. But the amount of the, of the stream V2 is is very large it's, uh, it's more than double the amount of v1 and this is because i'm using a lot of solvent in this second case so when you multiply this 10 percent by the 26.464 you get 2.66 kilograms which is extracting 76 percent of the a entering in the feed so uh, the the percent a is lower because the stream is very very large so as a percent it's lower but as a, an amount it's larger um, than than this case so you would see that I, I was able to increase the uh, amount of A that I extracted by around um, 600 something or it's like 570 grams uh, it's around half a kilogram uh, but, but I, uh, by increasing the solvent but I did this or achieved this by increasing the solvent by 130% which is a great great amount uh, this is not um, practical and it's not economical the solvent costs money and it will cost you money for operating um, the the, um, the unit by pumping and uh, then to do the separation uh, to reuse it and and uh, recover it uh, so it's not practical to use a single stage uh, even if you use a large amount of solvent, it's not going to be economical. And that's why we use the what we call the multi-stage extraction. In this case, I'm using many stages, um, like we do in distillation, like we do in, in all uh, mass uh, transfer operations. Uh, so this is uh, going to be the topic of the next video. We're going to see exactly like we did today. We will see the equations and we will see uh, how we apply this graphically. It's going to be a little more complicated uh, but it's um, it's the same concept that we're using here so i'll see you in the next video inshallah goodbye